Hi there, it's Mrs. Ferris from Wood Library with my friend Bernard. Are you ready for some bedtime stories? We are. So let's get started with one called Messy Jesse. This book is written and illustrated by Paula Balls. And it's published by Tiger Tales. This is Messy Jesse. He loved having fun and he was really good at making things like paper hats and delicious cakes and blanket forts, but he was especially good at making a mess. And the more Jesse played, the more mess he made. So the mess grew and grew and grew until one day all his favorite toys had disappeared. He couldn't find his crunchy bone. He couldn't even find his cozy blanket. But worst of all, the other pets couldn't find Jesse. He had disappeared too. Now Rabbit hopped into the mess to find Jesse. But then Rabbit got lost. Cat tried next. She climbed in very carefully, but soon she was lost too. Now only Hamster was left. And he dove in to find the others. But oh no, now all the pets were lost. Where are you? called the cat. I can't see a thing, said the hamster. I'm over here, said the rabbit. And then at last, Messy Jesse had an idea. He started to put away all the paper and pens, the pots and pans, the paint and brushes, and ever so slowly, things reappeared. First, Jesse found the cat, and then he found the rabbit and the hamster. He found his blanket beneath a pile of hats and his bone was in a shoe and his favorite toys were under his blanket. Until finally he looked around and he saw that everything was very, very clean. Hooray, everyone cheered. Now there was space to make a mess all over again. Oh, that messy Jesse. <laughs> well, I bet he would like jumping on the bed. So can you get your five little, hmm, do we have dogs tonight? Five little puppy dogs were jumping on the bed. When one fell off, oh my, he bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more puppy dogs jumping on the bed. So four little puppy dogs were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monk, oh, puppy dogs jumping on the bed. So three little puppy dogs were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more puppy dogs jumping on the bed. So two little puppy dogs were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monk puppy dogs jumping on the bed. So that leaves one little puppy dog jumping on the bed. She fell off and she bumped her head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more puppy dogs jumping on the bed. So there are no puppy dogs and there are no monkeys. I keep forgetting when I change those. Well, our next story is called The Black Rabbit. This is written and illustrated by Philippa Leathers. And it's published by Candlewick Press. 
Rabbit woke up one morning and stepped out of his burrow into the bright sunlight. It was a beautiful day. But something was wrong. He was not alone. Rabbit was scared. Go away, Black Rabbit, he cried. But the Black Rabbit didn't move. The rabbit ran, but the black rabbit was right behind him. Rabbit ran even faster. Oh, the black rabbit won't find me here, thought rabbit as he hid behind a tree. But when rabbit stepped out from behind the tree, there was black rabbit right in front of him. Maybe he's not a good swimmer like me, thought Rabbit. So he jumped into the river and he swam to the other side. But as he pulled himself up onto the bank, Black Rabbit climbed out of the water too. What do you want? cried Rabbit trembling. Why are you following me? But the black rabbit did not reply. Rabbit began to run again faster than he had ever run before, straight into the deep, dark woods. Now the forest was dark and quiet, and the black rabbit was nowhere to be seen. And with a sigh of relief, Rabbit sat down and nibbled a carrot until he noticed two eyes shining brightly in the dark. Oh no, thought Rabbit. The black rabbit has found me. But it was not the black rabbit. Rabbit ran as fast as he could out of the deep, dark forest with Wolf close behind him. And then, oh no, he tripped. Rabbit scrambled to his feet, but it was too late. He shut his eyes tight and he waited for the wolf to attack. But nothing happened. Nothing happened because there, standing in the sunlight behind Rabbit was the Black Rabbit. Rabbit smiled and somehow he knew that the Black Rabbit was smiling back. Then hand in hand, they bounced off across the field. Did you figure out who Black Rabbit was? I'm not gonna tell. Well, let's do a finger play about a rabbit. Can you put up your two fingers like this? They look like bunny ears. Here is a bunny with his ears so funny. And here's his hole in the ground. When a noise he hears, he pricks up his ears and he hops in his hole with a bound. Let's do it again, that's a quick one. Here is a bunny with his ears so funny and here's his hole in the ground. When a noise he hears, he pricks up his ears and he hops in his hole with a bound. Now that kind of had a surprise at the end, didn't it? That last story. And well, this next story has kind of a surprise too. At least it surprised me when I read it. And it's another story with a wolf in it. This is called Mr. Wolf's Pancakes. It's written and illustrated by Jan Fearnley. 
And it's also published by Tiger Tales. They do a lot of good books. One day, Mr. Wolf was feeling mm, hungry. He decided to make some pancakes. Mmm, mmm, he said, licking his lips at the thought of a big pile of fresh, delicious pancakes. Now, Mr. Wolf had never made pancakes before, so he took his big recipe book down off the shelf and looked inside. But, oh my, wolves can't read very well. Did you notice? He's got the book upside down. Mr. Wolf had trouble understanding it, so he went to get some help from his neighbors. He called on Chicken Little, who lived next door. Can you please help me read this, he asked. No, said Chicken Little, slamming the door in Mr. Wolf's face with a bang. Oh dear, sighed Mr. Wolf. He sat down and slowly read the book and worked out what he needed all by himself. He was going to need flour and eggs and milk. Now, Mr. Wolf looked in his cupboard for the ingredients, but he couldn't find anything he needed. I'll go to the store, he said to himself, and then he settled down to write a list. But, well, wolves aren't very good at writing. So Mr. Wolf went to call on Wee Willy Winky. You're very clever, Mr. Wolf said. Can you help me write my shopping list? No, said Wee Willy Winky. Go away, and he slammed his door with a bang. Well, there's no need to be like that, said Mr. Wolf quietly. Well, Mr. Wolf went back home, sat down, and worked very hard at his writing until he'd made his shopping list all by himself. Now he needed to count his money to make sure he had enough. But wolves aren't very good at counting, so he went to the gingerbread man for some help. Can you help me count my money, please? He asked politely. No, I'm too busy to bother with you, said the gingerbread man, slamming his door with a bang. So poor Mr. Wolf had to sit down and count his money all by himself. It took him a long time and he had to check it three times before it was right, but he did it all by himself. Now Mr. Wolf needed a basket to carry his groceries, so he called on Little Red Riding Hood. May I please borrow your basket? He asked very nicely. I'm not lending my basket to you, said Little Red Riding Hood. Get out of here. So Mr. Wolf set off to the store without a basket. I'll manage, he said to himself. So Mr. Wolf went to the store. He looked at his list and remembered what he needed, counted out his money and carried the eggs milk and flour home, all by himself. And now it was time to make the pancakes, but wolves aren't very good at cooking, so Mr. Wolf called on the three little pigs. Can you please help me cook my pancakes? I'll share them with you, he said kindly. Oh, forget about it, chorused the pigs, slamming their doors, bang, bang, bang. Mr. Wolf felt sad because nobody wanted to help him. So Mr. Wolf went home and started to make the pancakes all by himself. And soon there was a huge pile of delicious pancakes on the table, all ready for eating. Now, as Mr. Wolf had been making his pancakes, a lovely smell had drifted out of the kitchen and all of his neighbors could smell it and it made them feel very hungry. They wanted some pancakes too. So they decided to try their luck. They knocked on Mr. Wolf's door. Give us some of your pancakes, said the rude brunch. 
Why, they didn't even say please. Why should I give any to you, said Mr. Wolf? None, not one of you would help me. Oh, we'll help you eat them, replied Mr. Wolf's neighbors nastily. Anyway, we're not going away until you give us some. Well, Mr. Wolf thought very hard for a moment. There was only one decent thing to do. Oh, very well then, he sighed. You'd better come in. So Mr. Wolf opened the door wide and whoosh! His greedy neighbors rudely pushed him aside and dashed down the hall. Mr. Wolf shook his head, shrugged his shoulders, and followed them into the kitchen. And when they were all in, oh, Mr. Wolf gobbled them up, snippity, snappity. And that was the end of his unhelpful neighbors. And then with his bulging stomach still not quite full, Mr. Wolf sat down to eat his pile of pancakes. And he did it all by himself. Well, there was nobody else around. Isn't that a surprise? But I think it does go to show that if your neighbor asks for some help, you should give them some help because you never know when you might need their help. Well, I've got five little hot dogs that are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went damp. So four little hot dogs dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. One little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So now no little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Would you like stories about wolves? Because I have another one. This is called Nikki and the Big Bad Wolf. And this is written by Larry Gorbachev, illustrated by him too. And it's published by North South Books. Now one windy night, Nikki woke up. Help, he cried. Well, Mother rushed right in. What on earth is the matter? She asked. Wolves, cried Nikki. A hundred wolves were chasing me. And that's what he thought it was like. A hundred wolves, asked Mother. Are you sure? Well, said Nikki, maybe it was 50. 50 wolves, but they were racing after me and I couldn't run away fast enough. Fifty wolves, said Mother. Are you sure? Well, said Nikki. Maybe it was only fifteen wolves, but they were a bloodthirsty bunch. Fifteen wolves. Mm, seems like a lot, said Mother. Are you sure? Well, maybe there were only five, actually, admitted Nikki. But they were right on top of me. Well... I think it was just a bad dream, Nikki. And now it's time for you all to go back to sleep. Mother tucked everyone in, turned
turned out the light and closed the door. Did you hear that? asked Nathan. It sounded like wolves, said Nora. Hungry wolves, said Ned. With huge fangs, said Nellie. And they ran. They're right outside now, cried Nikki. You ready? Help! cried all five of the little bunnies. Now what's the matter, said Mother. A hundred wolves right outside our window. They're going to get us. Well, all of you stay right here, said Mother. I'll settle this wolf business once and for all. Take that, you wolves, and that. Go on, get out of here, she said, banging her broom against the trash cans. There now, said Mother. Don't worry about those wolves. I chased them all away. Are you sure? asked Nikki. I'm sure, said Mother. But if they come back, I've got my broom right here to chase them away again. So Nikki and his brothers and sisters all snuggled down and finally went to sleep with Mother right in the middle. I have a feeling that's what they wanted all along, don't you? Well, can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap. Clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Go ahead and stand up because it's time to jump, jump. Jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? <sighs> yawn your sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> yawn your sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> Yawn your sleepies out, wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. Well, our next story doesn't have a wolf in it. This is called Tiptoe Joe. It's written by Ginger Fogelsong Gibson and illustrated by Laura Rankin. And it's published by Green Willow Books. Tiptoe fast. Tiptoe slow. Say hello to Tiptoe Joe. Donkey, donkey, come with me. I know something you should see. Clop, clop. Rabbit, rabbit, come with me. I know something you should see. Thump, thump. Turkey, turkey, come with me. I know something you should see. Flap, flap. Tell us, tell us, Tiptoe Joe, what's the secret? Let us know. Flap, flap, thump, thump, clop, clop. Tiptoe, tiptoe, 
quiet, please. Tiptoe underneath the trees. Moose, moose, come with me. I know something you should see. Thud, thud. Owl, owl, come with me. I know something you should see. Swish, swish. Beaver, beaver, come with me. I know something you should see. Slap, slap. Tell us, tell us, Tiptoe Joe. What's the secret? Let us know. Swish, swish, slap, slap, thud, thud. Tiptoe, tiptoe, quiet please. Tiptoe underneath the trees. Slap, slap, swish, swish, thud, thud, flap, flap, thump, thump. Toe lightly, point your toe. Slap, slap, swish, swish, thud, thud. Tiptoe soft, tiptoe slow. Flap, flap, thump, thump, clop, clop. Tell us, tell us, Tiptoe Joe. What's the secret? Let us know. Tiptoe. Tiptoe, softly creep. Here's my secret, fast asleep. So what was the secret? Two, here it goes. Well, shall we get our bubble gum out? I can get mine out of my pocket here. And it's just pretend bubble gum. But I'm gonna unwrap it and put it in my mouth and chew it all up. And then I hope you'll join me with some sticky fun. Here we go. Okay, put out your hand. And when I count to three, spit your gum right in your hand. One, two, three, and clap your hands together and now they're oh my goodness they're stuck with sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum stick it on your chin now you don't want to leave it there so say it with me on stick sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum stick it on your back on stick sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum stick it on your nose on stick sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum sticky sticky bubble gum stick it on your knee on stick Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your arm. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. Hmm? On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Time to throw it in the trash. Now, I should let you know that Bernard was the one who picked out most of these stories, and for some reason, he must be fascinated with wolves because we had a story in it with the black rabbit and the wolf, and we had a story about the pancakes and the wolf. 
And, well, we're going to have one more story with a wolf in it. Once upon a time, there was a little girl whose grandmother had made her the most beautiful red cloak with a hood on it. Now, the little girl loved that cloak, and she wore it every single day. And people around there started to call her Little Red Riding Hood. Now, one morning, Little Red Riding Hood's mother called to her and said, Oh, dear, your grandmother is sick in her cottage in the woods, and we should take her some good things for her to eat. So, Little Red Riding Hood's mother packed her a basket full of good things for Grandma. And she said, now remember, as you walk through the forest, don't dally along the way and don't stop and talk to strangers. And Little Red Riding Hood promised that she wouldn't. But sometimes little girls forget. Now she hadn't gone very far when who should she meet but a wolf. And the wolf said to her, why, where are you going, young lady? And Little Red Riding Hood, forgetting what her mother had warned her about, said, Why there, Mr. Wolf, I'm off to see my grandmother. She is not feeling very well. She lives in her cottage in the middle of the woods, and I'm taking her a basket of good things for her to eat, which will help make her better. Oh, said the wolf. And where does she live? In a lovely cottage in the middle of the woods, Little Red Riding Hood said. Ah, said the wolf. And don't you think you ought to take her something else? Something else, said Little Red Riding Hood. Like what? Like some flowers, said the wolf. There are some there by the side of the road. Oh, said Little Red. Why, that's just what I'll do. So she stopped to pick some flowers. And the wolf, well, he ran on ahead. Now, Little Red didn't pay any attention to, to the time, but soon she had a beautiful bouquet of flowers, and she kept on walking through the woods. Now, in her house in the middle of the woods was Grandma in her bed, and before too very long, she heard a knock at the door. Oh, is that you, Little Red, she called. Your mother said she were going to come. Please come in, the door is open. So the wolf went in and when he saw Granny in the bed, oh my goodness, do you know what he did? Why he ate Grandma up in one big gulp. And then he climbed into Grandma's bed, pulled up the covers and found one of her nightcaps. and put it way down over his eyes. And then he waited for Little Red Riding Hood to come along. Now he didn't have long to wait because she, with her beautiful bouquet of flowers and her basket of goodies, Little Red couldn't wait to see her grandmother. When she got to the cottage, she knocked on the door. Granny, Granny, it's me, Little Red. May I come in? I've got some goodies for you. Come in, said the wolf in a very hoarse voice. So Little Red went right in, and she went right up to the bed. And she looked. She thought her grandmother didn't look well, not well at all. In fact, she looked, well, quite different. Grandmother, she said, what big eyes you have. The better to see whispered the wolf. Oh, Grandma, what big ears you have. The better to hear you with, my dear, said the wolf. Oh, Grandma, said Little Red, what big... Teeth you have. And with that, the wolf threw back the covers and called out, the better to eat you with, my dear. And he hopped out of bed and, oh my goodness, he swallowed up Little Red Riding Hood. And then he fell back into the bed, oh, so tired and oh, so full. He fell back into the bed and he started to snore. Not just a little bit, 
but a big wolfy snore. <sighs> well, just then, a woodsman was going by and he heard that snoring and knew right away it could be the grandmother. So he tiptoed up and when he peeked in through the door, he saw the wolf and he threw back the covers and very carefully, because he didn't know where the grandma was, very carefully, he cut that wolf open right from his chin down to his belly button. And when he did, out climbed Little Red Riding Hood. And right behind her came Grandma. Now, so that the wolf wouldn't notice anything was different, Little Red Riding Hood went and found two big rocks and they put them right inside that wolf's belly and grandma took her needle and thread and sewed the wolf up very carefully but with good strong stitches and then they went away and hid outside and when the wolf awoke why, he decided he'd better run back home, but when he jumped out of bed with those two big rocks in his belly, oh my goodness, he fell down dead. And he never bothered anyone ever again. And as for Little Red and her grandmother, well, grandmother loved the flowers that Little Red brought. And she ate all the good things that were in the basket and she felt much better very quickly. And Little Red Riding Hood learned a very good lesson that when your mother tells you not to stop and talk to strangers, it's a good thing to do just that. All right. Well, let's finish up with one last story. Do you have your pajamas on? because we're gonna be doing Pajama Time tonight by Sandra Boynton. And this one is published by Workman Publishing. Look at them all dancing there. Well, the moon is up. It's getting late. So let's get ready to celebrate. It's Pajama Time. So pull on the bottoms and put on the top and get yourself set to Pajama Diva. It's pajama time. Now some are old and some are new. Some are red, like my friend Bernard's, and some are blue. Some are fuzzy and some are not. But we can all pajama in whatever we've got. It's pajama time. Oh yes, it's pajama time. Now some are pink and some are green, and some are the ugliest we've ever seen. They might be stripy or polka dot, but we can all pajama in whatever we've got. It's pajama time. So jammy to the left and jammy to the right. Jamma, 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 PJ. Everybody's wearing them for dancing tonight. Jamma, 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 PJ. Now all around the room in one big line, wearing our pajamas and looking so fine. Then hop into bed, turn out the light. You can have a party in your dreams tonight. It's pajama time. Hush, hush, it's pajama time. Hush, hush, it's pajama time. Shh, good night, sleep tight. And we hope, right, Bernard? We hope that you'll come back and join us again next week for some more 